Hey, I wanted to make this quick video to show you why I turned this into this in order to make this. Hopefully this is interesting to you. It's a way to work with the color aware mode and give yourself more range to deal with colors that are in the same bin. So stay tuned. All right, so I decided to show you the end of the process and then I'll show you how I went through the whole process. So this is the end of the process and I want you to see I separated this image that you originally had the yellow in it and I've made it green and dark green in the hair and the gauntlets and the yellow highlights in order to move them into the green bin. If you think of these color bins as that, as bins, then you start having more control over where your colors go and how they look. Now, I am not the first person to make a video on this. I'm gonna link in the description to Petronius Pixel's video on how to use, he called it the green solution. Um, it's not exactly the same as this, but very, very close. Same idea that you have three color bins and you can move stuff around those bins. So hopefully this will be helpful to you and let's get started. Okay, so let's start from the original image. This is the original image right here. Um, it's got a background, that doesn't really matter. Um, and this is just standard mode. So let's go into color aware and I'll show you the issue here. Okay, so the cloak you can immediately see separates very nicely. Let's bring in a color aware mode. I normally do the bamboo, let's do the polymaker. Polymaker also has a color aware uh, color set here. And then again, as usual, we need to expand our whites to cover up their space. Okay, so now we have this color aware mode and we can see that there is blue and there's red, but there really isn't any green in this image. There's no green in here. And this is an important thing to keep in mind. With, with no green in this image, there is no reason for us to use the green channel. So normally what we would do is we would come in here and we go to a blue red that puts blue in the background, red in the foreground, a blue red color aware preset. Okay, now you see that she's turned green, everything looks awful. This is something that gets a lot of early Hueforge users. They change to a mode, it looks terrible, and they go back. It's going to look terrible. We know it's gonna look terrible, let's fix it. All right, we're just gonna turn off this white, this black, and this green. Now we're gonna bring the red up a bit so we can start seeing it. We're gonna bring up the black, and then we'll bring this white up so that our blue is also correct. Okay. So now we've got one where we've got red and blue and white and the green range, it does still exist. It isn't actually gone, but it's here, oh, it's two layers. It only occupies two layers. Um, and, but you see here, let's, we need a yellow. So let's bring in a yellow. We'll bring in the, um, let's, let's stick with the poly, poly maker. We'll bring in a um, poly light yellow. We'll put it here. And we start turning things yellow, but you notice that Things are turning yellow, but it's either orange or red, and there really isn't any in between. And the pro and even worse, we can't really get the skin tone right. Either the skin tone is uh, orange, or it looks you know okay. The skin tone's kind of okay, but then we don't have the gauntlets that are right. Now we could use um, some a different red. Let's add a red that's a higher TD. I love bamboo color or polymaker colors, but they don't have any lower TD reds or higher TD reds. Sorry. Um, that lets us get the shading in here and we want this pop of red here, but it's still, we have this issue where it's basically all orange. Um, and so what do we do? How do we solve this problem? Well, the way we solve this problem is we realize that this yellow and orange here is being brought into the red range, right? It's being used as part of the red color range. And we don't want that because it's too hard, it's too compressed. We want to move that yellow into a new range. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna recolor that yellow. Now I'm gonna show you in Affinity how I do it. It can be done in other modes as well. So here it is in Affinity, all done. Okay, great, it's all done. That's not very helpful, right? All right, let's go back and look at what I did. So if we start, this is the starting image I have here. Okay, now what happened here, I chopped off here, here's the starting image with the background removed. I removed the background just because I wanted to print it faster. It's a pro tip, um, removing the background can help you print it faster. And if you want, you can then stick it on top of the square background of whatever color you want. Um, but I was doing a bunch of tests, so I wanted to print this faster. So here's the base image. Now I went and started doing immediately this HSL shift adjustment. Now, what does this do? The HSL shift adjustment, which is in a lot of different um, tools, 
lets you shift the color. Like I can shift the yellows and I've defined this range. This range from here to here is where the shift occurs. And then I can shift it into the green. And why am I shifting it to green? Because we have this green bin we're not using. And so all we need to do is push the color into the green. Now, the way this works is you just, you have these sliders. They, this slider just moves from side to side and then it changes where the color is. Now, the other thing you can do is you can change the luminosity. You can make this darker or you can make this lighter. And I actually did a lot of experimentation with this before I realized that I need this to be really light. And I'll show you why in a minute. Now, why did I chop out the, the face and the hair? Well, I chopped out the face and the hair because they were too close in color to this yellow. They were in the yellow range because I needed to grab all this orange over here. And that's where the brown of the hair is. This is all fully saturated, fully um, bright colors in this ring, but it captures dimmer colors as well. And so it captures different saturations and different luminosities of that luminosity just being how bright it is and saturation being how colorful it is. Um, it captures both of those in the same um, image or in the same grab. And so it was turning the hair and the face. Mostly the issue was it was turning the face green. But I wanted to actually be able to do the hair in a different luminosity. And I'll show you in a minute. So I did quick selection. Now the, I'm not, I don't want to spend a ton of time selecting here. You use your magic wand, you use your selecting tools. Affinity has a great set of selection tools. This smart select here, um, it makes it real easy to grab things like the face, right? I, very close to the whole face at once. And then I can just get rid of the small bits of things that I don't want. Like the hair here. So that makes it really easy to chop out the face and, and separate it out. So it doesn't get affected. Um, so the other tools have other options for that. Um, the magic wand in paint.net and a similar magic wand or fuzzy selection tool in GIMP. Obviously, um, any you know, paid software is going to have a, a nice tool for this. Um, you can also do it by color code, but that's a little bit harder in here when, again, we have these conflicting color codes. So I've grabbed that. Now the issue here is that I've done something else here. I've done a recolor. All right, so I'm in here in the recolor dialog, and the way recolor works, it's different from the HSL uh, shift. The HSL shift picks a, an angle. So the way that HSL works is a bunch of angles. So it picks an angle range, and then says, okay, I'm gonna shift that whole angle range somewhere else. Recolor just recolors everything in the image, um, the same color tone. So you don't have to worry about picking colors and getting the right range. So if you can do a selection like this hair selection that doesn't have to be perfect, but should be pretty good, then you can recolor everything all at once. And then here, I brought the brightness down quite a bit because, and I'll show you this, because I wanted the hair to be darker. So the hair, if you look at this, if you're thinking about, okay, we're going to take the green range and we're going to expand it, the dark part of the green range, when we work it, these are oranges and yellows, the darker part of the range is going to be brown. And so that's gonna match up with the hair really nicely. And then the brighter parts of the range are gonna be your bright yellows and your, your highlights, and that's gonna match up with the, the rest of the suit nicely. So you do have to think about how this works a little bit, but it's not that hard to see that brown turns into orange, turns into yellow, turns into white when you're moving up that range. So effectively what we've done is we've grabbed the two different parts of this range. Let me show these all back. And we've made this version. Now I did have to go back and tweak this lightness quite a few times to get the separation the way I wanted to, but it's really not that big of a process. Um, you tweak it, you export it, and then you reload the image. So let me bring in the actual project that I've finished up here with. So the one I started with again. So you see we have this dark green here that lets us hit the browns. And then we have the bright green here, which lets us hit the yellows. And yellows are a little tricky in terms of pigment, in terms of filament, they're a little tricky. And in fact, I don't actually like it with this uh, three and a half. I like it better with this six here. I think it's more of a gold color and it prints better. I've been having trouble with that three and a half yellow printing kind of white. So um, here we go. Here's a version of this image where we have separated out the yellows and the browns. We've, we've basically said, well, I want the reds to be reds but I want the yellows and browns to be greens. And that just pushes them into this new bin that allows us to treat them as a new color and, and run with them and make them look good. And we pick the top bin here 
Why did I pick the top end? Why did I pick green? Because I could have pushed the red. It would have been just as easy to hue shift the red up into the green bin and leave the yellows and the browns back down in the red bin. That would have been just as easy to do, maybe easier. But if you look at this image, remember, whenever we do a color aware, they're going to stack in a particular order. And we're stacking in this order from lowest to you know, bottom to top. And the blue, the cape in the background makes a ton of sense, right? It's behind her mostly, except on the shoulders there. And the red here is in front of the cape, but behind the, the different um, uh, gauntlets and, and costume elements. Um, the hair is kind of both. It's both in front of her and behind her, but it's not super distracting to see the hair be in front. Um, the bigger thing would be if these were all inset into the suit, that would be a little weird. But you can think about that. You don't have to keep this image the same color at all. You could recolor the red and leave the yellow instead. Um, that might actually have been a little bit easier because, in terms of process because the red was all kind of uniform height and it was all kind of uniform color. So it would have been pretty easy to get the red all at once and shift it to the green. Um, the issue there would have been then that, and then the hair was already darker and lighter. Let me show you, let me remind you what the face image is. The hair was already separated where the brown was darker and then the orange and the yellow were brighter. Um, the problem there would have been that the green um, that we shifted the red into would have been on top of all of these elements. And I think it would have looked a little weird. Um, obviously, feel free to experiment with that and pick your ordering that makes sense. Um, but I thought this was a helpful tip for you. And again, this is not the way the Hue Forge is going to work forever. This is just the way that Hue Forge works currently. And it gives us this power with what we have without having to implement a whole bunch of new code to allow you to do this kind of work. So I will be moving forward, adjusting these, allowing you to fully turn off ones, allowing you to arbitrarily arrange them so that we could have put the green down below the red, and then you would have been fine to just recolor the suit. But I just want you to think about color aware this way. Think about color aware, not so much as what color is the image, though it's great if the image is already in the right color space, but how can I easily manipulate this image to fit it into the color space in a way that lets me get what I want? And obviously, I picked more of a blocky, cartoony style to show you um, how this works, but it, it can work for non-cartoon, more realistic images as well. Obviously, the more shades you have, it gets trickier, but um, I thought that this was a really good way to show you how this could work. So, hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this makes you think about color aware in another new way and level up with it. And uh, hope to see you, Hugh Ford, your Hugh Forge results in the future.